This is fun. Dr. Sanjay Gupta in the studio. What's up, doctor? Thank you for having me. Excited to be here. I said to our producer, Brian, I had heard you do a thing. I speak right into these mics. They're kind of cheap. No. I had um, <laughs> heard you do a thing on CNN. You were talking about, and this is one thing I want to get into before we talk about your show and everything. You were talking about kids and the research on video games and iPads and everything else and how some of it is still kind of unclear. And I tried explaining what you had said about that on the radio yeah. and did a very poor job and misinformed everybody. <laughs> So as a parent of a 10-year-old, and you got three kids? I have three kids, yes. What are their ages? 10, 12, and 13. All right, so that's your world too. Right. As a parent, when you're concerned about the screen time and you say stuff like, oh, you're too close to the screen, you're hurting your eyes, your, your <laughs> brain's not developed, your cerebral cortex doesn't develop till you're 25. <laughs> I mean, I'm just spitting out stuff I know nothing about. That sounded pretty good, actually. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> My kid's not hearing it, though. His hearing's off. What do we say to parents? Well... First of all, it is topic number one. I mean, this is what we talk about, I think, as parents. I have three girls, and uh, you know, we worry about this all the time. I, w there's a lot we don't know. I mean, we're, we're, we're definitely in a new era of life. Our parents didn't have to deal yeah. with this with us. And so a lot of the statistics and the data that's coming out is coming out real time. I mean, we're mm -hmm. learning things on the fly. What is interesting, I think, is a couple of things. One is that so much of what we see on the screen, everything from the type of content to the, right. to the way information is presented, is designed to be highly addictive. I mean, you can find that there's certain areas of the brain that are responsible for addiction to right. foods, to behaviors, things like that, are those same areas of the brain that seem to change in response to a lot of screen time. And also, you know, the people who designed that they knew that, right? right it wasn't that right. wasn't by accident. Right. If you want to get people to play games over and over again, engage with certain platforms over and over again, there's ways to make the brain crave those things, yeah. and and that's happening. And it's it's mostly kids because their yeah. brains are still developing, so those become like these well worn paths in their brain. Yep. Not only is it there, but you need to have it to reinforce it minute by minute, mm -hmm. literally. But it can happen to adults as well. The other thing, and I'll tell you, and this is a little bit more nuanced, but you'll appreciate this okay. as the father of a 10-year-old, is that, you know, I, I really worry about stress, right? People talk about stress. It's this very nebulous term. Like, how do you define it? It's stress is necessary for some people. The problem with stress is when you can't turn it off. We all need some stress, right. but it's become relentless. And the problem, I think, with some of these some of these devices and some of the content and stuff they provide mm -hmm. is that you never get a break from it. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what I worry about for the kids the most. Yeah. They may be lying on their beds. They may be safe in their own homes. They're less right. likely to go out. They're less likely to drive. They're less likely to drink right. than, than generation earlier. So they're maybe physically safer. But the stress and the mental health yeah. toll I worry about. He came in the room the other night. I'm not trying to put my kid on blast, but hopefully a learning experience for all of us. I'd asked him to come help me with something in the bedroom. And I go to bed at a decent hour because we have to get up at, you know, zero dark 30. Right. And uh, he goes, yeah, yeah, I'll be right in, Dad. So he comes and he was playing Fortnite outside. And mm. we cut back a lot on that because we saw some problems. But he's playing Fortnite. And he goes, yeah, help me with this whatever thing. And he goes, okay. And he's trying to do it really, really fast. I go, what's going on, buddy? Uh. He goes, I got to get back. Get back to what? Get back to Fortnite. There's only six people left and I'm one of the six. <laughs> So it counts down to like who wins the entire thing. Sure. And I go, well, hold on, hold on. And I could see it in his eyes. Yeah. He really, in that moment, was going to be upset if I didn't let him get back because he felt like, and I'm like, dude, it's a video game. It right. doesn't matter. But he was so proud of how far he had advanced yeah, sure. that he didn't want to miss out and he had to race back. If that's the context of your life, if that's yeah. the world in which we live, we we always thought of these things as a as a, a you know sort of a fun diversion, right? Right. Because we didn't grow up with these. I mean, smartphones became widely adopted in this country 20, 24, 25 years ago. Right. For us as kids, we didn't deal with this. Yeah. This is the context of your life. So tough. And I think it's it's you know people think well is this a good sort of uh, you know substitute for social yeah. interaction. And I think that that we're starting to see it's it's just it's not right. You know, I love team sports. I think mm -hmm. team sports are great, mm -hmm. even if some of them might have some dangers like football. Mm -hmm. But this is not a team sport, and no. it's not offering those same sorts of advantages. Well, he gets he gets some kids in the squad. Like you can bring kids yeah. in your seven stuff, and there can be some social stuff there that's good. But there's also bullying there too, right? I mean, because kids are on the headsets and everything. I can go on for hours. Mm -hmm. uh, last thing before I go to break here. Can ADD or ADHD, is that something that's acquired or is something you're born with? Because I wonder if the video games present any problems in that world. Well, you know, we, we definitely have seen the numbers go up in a way that would suggest that it can't just be genetic. Okay. I mean, you know, if it was genetic, you would see a, a sort of more flattened numbers, right, you know, even right, as the population the grows, but it's gone up. And some of yeah. that is more diagnosis, more awareness, right. probably over diagnosis to be fair. Yeah. You know, teachers and, and school systems diagnosing it more often than they used to. Right. But I think it's definitely something in the environment. And, you know, I think, I think these devices are okay. part of it. 
Man, this is so cool. We're talking to a brain surgeon. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's just awesome. You know, we've had plenty of doctors roll through here. I'm not going to say any other names, obviously, because I don't know how you guys feel about each other. Um, this is a brain surgeon. This is really cool. When was the last time you touched a brain? Uh, Monday. Oh, wow. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> yeah. oh like a live brain? You yeah, actually did surgery? Brain. You did surgery on somebody on Monday? I did surgery on Monday. I do surgery every, every Monday, every other Friday. I uh, had no yeah. idea. I thought you just... Put that to the side and went full on media. No, no, you know I I, I like yeah. being a doctor. And oh, I, I tell you, awesome. the, the funny thing is, I probably like being a doctor more now that I do media because, in some ways, right. I, I get to see it from the outside and the inside. Yeah. So all the things I love about it, I right. I can just continue to love. You know, every field has its pluses and minuses. Sure. You know, there's 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 annoying things in any profession. Yeah. But I get to maximize the good, mm. so I love it. Man, I would think so many people be asking for you by name because you're so famous now and everything they sure. see on TV and mm -hmm. like I want that guy. I don't want this other guy down the hall who I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I want the guy with that Twitter following. You know, <laughs> yeah, it's it's, yeah. it's kind of funny, right? Because it, it must like, be. Yeah. You're not. You're not. I think I'm a good neurosurgeon, but I'm yeah. no better because I do television. Right, right. But that is the perception. There's, you know? know what it is? It's a comfort factor. Yeah. And I if think that's right. good for a patient, right. I'm fine mm -hmm. with that. Yeah, you're right. I think that's right. They feel like they have some relationship yeah. and they know comforts. you, they see yeah. you on TV and they go, that's a guy. That's a status thing too. They want to be able to say. <laughs> well, I didn't want to say <laughs> that. That's a good touch my brain. <laughs> I do want to talk about the TV show you're doing though. Your CNN series, Chasing Life with Dr. Sanjay Gupta, premieres April 13th. Now, what is this all about? Well, this was a, an opportunity to travel around the world and, and learn about interesting health practices uh -huh. that I think have real merit and things that I think uh, people should know about. You know, we, we, we spend a lot of money on healthcare in the United States, trillions of dollars. Right. Our life expectancies not very good, 23rd in the world, Ugh. 12th in terms of preventable deaths. And our, and our life expectancy is actually going down the last three years. So, you know, it, it, you know I love, I'm a, I'm a doctor in the system. Mm -hmm. I think there's so many wonderful things about our healthcare system, mm -hmm. but there's clearly places around the world where people are living better, happier, they're healthier lives. They're doing something lives. right. Yeah, they're doing something right. And they're oftentimes doing it for a lot less. Yeah. You know, I think just the way that we think about health, the way that we think about uh, fueling our bodies, how we move, yeah. traditional practices, I think I think a lot of times Valentine, we feel if it's not American made, it right. doesn't have any value or it right. has little value. It needs to be American made. But we live in a global world where there's some really interesting things happening, and I had the luxury and the privilege, really, of being able to travel to these places, immerse myself in these practices, see yeah. if they're real, and bring those stories back. And I get it because there is a little bit of patriotism even in my life. I'm like, if I'm buying Viagra, I buy it because it's Pfizer's and <laughs> Pfizer's an American-based company, you know. So I'm not going to buy <laughs> something from overseas. You wouldn't buy your overseas Viagra. Yes, right. That's well, it's, it's uh, top of my head. What was your question, Bill, <laughs> for the doctor? You had something you wanted to talk about? Was there a theme that you saw going to all these different countries with these different traditions? Was there one theme that kind of united everybody? Well, I, you know, it, it was there was a. Places chosen for different reasons because people have the healthiest hearts, they're the happiest, they're the healthiest overall. But one thing I'll tell you, and this was a, a bit of a nuanced point, was that there's other countries that suffer from the same things that we do in the United States, right? They have, they've had economic challenges, they've, they have similar lifestyle in terms mm -hmm. of fast food and diabetes and stuff, and yet they still live longer and happier and better lives. So hmm. what I decided to sort of look at was what was the thing that was protecting them? Then what made their lives different if they had all the same sort of challenges? And one thing you find, and it's, this is going to sound a little squishy around the edges, but the value of having a strong social fabric where mm -hmm. it's a real communal, people have their communities of friends and their tribes or whatever they want right. to call them, uh, that ends up making a, a, a big difference in terms of buffering you or protecting you against some of the challenges yeah. that, that cause these health problems. And, you know, I, th I think in the, in the States, you know, it's become sort of rugged individualism is sort of the mantra, uh -huh. you know, go it alone. You know, we, we, we're, we're going to have that sort of feel. Right. And, and yet you find places that where they live particularly long lives, it's often because they're, they're, they have this sort of collective approach to things. Right. And societies that invest in that at the community level, at the state level, at the federal level, seem to do, to, to do better. So, so loneliness and social isolation is really, really toxic. Because a lot of our social interactions are online now. Yeah, that's a big thing in America yeah. where you don't have the, um, I guess the way, and I hate to be the guy that says the way we grew up, but I was talking to my wife about this the other day. I would sit in my front yard and play with kids on the street. Right. My son does not have that experience in right. Southern California. And there's different parts of our country where you might get that experience. Sure. But it's not, it's, you know, people live in their backyards or 
in their house. No one's out front playing with the kids in the street or letting your kid go out the front door. Now it's starting to sound like an old curmudgeon, but it's just not that way anymore. That social aspect for children is not there. Yeah. And I don't, you know, it's funny. I, I, I think about that a lot as well. And I don't know when it started for, for some reason, I feel like a lot of it started after nine 11. I don't, I don't know if we oh, became really? more okay. fearful as a nation or yeah. letting people Maybe. play in the front yard. I, I, I don't know, but, but you're absolutely right. And I think that, that, how you put a value on that, right? It's fun, right? Let your kids go play with yeah. the other neighborhood. That was fun. It was a fun diversion. But now that we don't have it, we start to see the other ramifications of not having that. Right. And I think, you know, just having someone check in on you, having someone who's actually concerned about your health, that yeah. encourages you to go take care of yourself or give, looks at you sideways if you're doing something unhealthy, you know, right. whatever it might be, what all those things add up to is yeah. something that ends up being really important. We're the only country in the world, in the developed world, where life expectancy is going in the wrong direction. Mm. This is depressing. I didn't know you were going to say this when you came in today. I know, and I and I hate to be depressing. I, right. I think it's 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 obviously a tragic trend, but I think it's totally fixable. It's awareness. I'm optim optimistic about yeah. where we can go, but how do we spend more money on healthcare than any other country in the world right. by far? And we're actually the only country where life expectancy is dropping. Yikes. That isn't right, Man. and, that, and that, that, that can be fixed. Did you see a holistic approach that was uh, making a difference in people's lives when you traveled around the world? Yeah. I mean, you, you know, um, every, every place you go, especially these countries that are healthy, yeah. healthcare is not sort of this necessary evil that you just go to when you're sick or you need to be diagnosed with something. It's sort of uh, just a f part of their, their way of life. So I was in Kerala, India, mm -hmm. and um, one of the oldest health practices there is called Ayurvedic Medicine. I've been fascinated with this. I'm Indian. Okay. My mom and dad, who are not doctors, but they're very scientifically minded people, would always give me the, their home remedies, and it was sort of a standing right, joke right. in our family. It was kind of like the Windex in my big fat oh, Greek yeah, wedding. Yeah. You know? Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. Yep. yeah. But, but then to go and see some of those things in practice and the fact that these traditions have been maintained for over a yeah. thousand years was interesting. And the diet, I'm like, how does a community pick their diet? Uh, you pick diet typically based on how it tastes, how food yeah. tastes, the mouth feel, like how it feels in your mouth uh, certain times a day versus other times a day. The Ayurvedic diet was all picked on the functionality of food. What is the function of this food? Uh, huh. Who needs this function? So, right. And then the palate part came second. The, the food's tasty. It's really good. Yeah. But what drove the diet was how is this food actually going to function in my body? And is that different than, than, than Kevin, than Jill, than, yeah. than, than you, you know, in terms of right. what we should be eating? So how do you get the right food to the right person at the right time? That was how they approached it, which is so very different than So you think genetics us. has something to do with your diet and what you should have yeah. to power you as a person? I, I think so. Okay. We, we, we have, you know, in, in India, they, they would call it your, your dosas, which you, you have a balance of these different type body types. Yeah. And we all are, have some combination of all three but we want to keep those doses in balance. That, right. That's a very unscientific explanation. Okay. But if you give a scientific explanation, there's clearly people who metabolize fat better than others, metabolize carbs uh, better than others, uh, who are more likely to have their cholesterol go up from a single cheeseburger versus a sugary soda. Right. We know that, and yet we treat everybody the same. You yeah. know? And, and, and that's just not how they do it in most parts of the world. I want this diet. This sounds good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's really good. Yeah. Do you explain this on the show? I mean, yeah. can I... I, I think that's that's one of the fun things of uh, this show. You know, it's it's a it's a true travel log sort of feeling uh -huh. show. I mean, I've you know we 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 really get to immerse ourselves in these places, so you feel like you're in Okinawa or Kerala or mm -hmm. 270 miles north of the Arctic Circle, like living there. Oh man! But then um, I got to explain things like why something would work. Understand like you know if you're outside in nature, everyone knows that feels good. Yeah. But why does that feel good? Right. Is there something that's actually happening in your body or your brain in response to that? I got to learn that, understand it, and then explain it. So we'll be out in the middle of a field, and all of a sudden I can create these these molecules and show what's happening inside your body, yeah. like using graphics. So it was it was it was just really it was a, it was yeah. a great opportunity to, to experience and then teach. You have oh, a full man. season in the can, ready to go. All done. Yep. How many episodes? Six episodes. Cool. Yeah. Oh, I'm excited to watch. We'll see how it goes. Can just, I rapid fire some questions at you? Yeah, right go ahead. Right? Just, I know it's yeah, probably hard wrap to give it up short answers rapid fire. Here, here okay. we go. Okay. Uh, how much drinking is too much drinking? Oh, here he goes. Well, <laughs> the... the um, I have a little bit of tequila every single night of my here, life. Here's, here's what... So a new study came out, and uh, you know, this is one that a lot of people are paying attention to. Like this is this either. the wine and cigarettes thing? Uh, well, no, just the wine. Oh, okay. okay. Well, no, okay. I heard that like a bottle of wine a week is as bad as 12 cigarettes or something. That's what they're well, saying. Well, what they say is that really oh, no... Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> no, you get scared on the couch too. <laughs> <laughs> the, 
Is it the cigarettes or the wine that's scaring you? <laughs> the, no, they say no amount of alcohol really is, is good for you. This was a new study. So now there's been all these studies in the past that say some red wine can be sure. good for your heart and things right. like that. The, what I took away from the study, which was a, a multiple countries involved in the study, so looking at all these different populations, is that um, I wouldn't start drinking in the pursuit of health at right. all. Sure. Right. If, it, if it gives you joy, if it makes you happy, if it's part of your socialization, there's great benefit to that, uh, obviously, to, to a limit. But for your health overall, there's really just no, mm. no, uh, no absolute amount that's good for you. Exactly. What if you said socialization? What if you drink alone, but you go on Twitter? <laughs> is that okay? You got to look people in the eye. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. All right, what, what else? Um, was that your I, only I one? I subscribe to a uh, vegan diet I have for a couple oh, of years excellent. now. Excellent. Yeah. Good? I think so. I, you know, I, I, um, and I'm not a vegan. I do eat meat from time to time, but I think that whether you're looking at your own personal health or you're looking at the impact on the environment, yeah. Uh, yeah. you know, right. I think there's a lot of reasons to pick a, a vegan diet. I was with this guy, Rich Roll, last night, who is a vegan and also an Ultraman and does Ultraman competitions, wow. which are Good basically God. two Ironmans back to back. And he does it on a vegan diet because people always say, well, I can't get enough protein. I can't, you know, build Drives enough me muscle. Crazy when people say that. You can. Yeah. And, and there's plenty of examples of people who can do that. So, and do you see a positive momentum in that direction in yeah, this country? Like think, all the, the fake meat out there and everything? I think it's definitely, definitely changing. And uh, you know, there's been some good studies now showing that you can reverse heart disease. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the feeling used to be oh. that once you had heart disease, you had it. Right. You're lucky if it doesn't progress. Is that the calcification and everything? Yeah, or is exactly. it so you can actually reverse You can reverse those blockages. Wow. They show oh, that's that crazy. without medications, without surgery, obviously, just wow. using the, uh, the, the plant-based, a truly plant-based diet. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Speaking of heart yeah. disease, another question on my list, how important is flossing? Can it lead to okay. heart disease? The, this has been a hot topic answer. around. No, no, before, don't no, leave down no, path. I'm going to ask the gentleman a question before he answers. He needs to have the information here in the studio. Um, I'm 50. Yeah. They're in their 30s. They apparently have very poor dentists. And some people, I'm not going to name you which one. Teeth look nice. Oh, thank you. Well, go get your vision checked. Um, these people, to my immediate right-hand side, floss, oh, twice a week? Huh. Yeah. yeah, you floss much more frequently. Twice a day at least? Yeah, yes. Once yeah. a day at least? Yeah, no, I mean, it, so I'll tell you two things on this. One is that, yes, uh, you, you've read those studies probably because inflammation in your mouth and in your gums is so linked to lots of different chronic diseases, including mm -hmm. heart disease. Inflammation so can, in general is very bad. Sure. Yeah, mm -hmm. so you can decrease the inflammation pretty significantly by flossing. Okay. What was interesting, and you may have seen this, it was fascinating to me, was the Associated Press had a study last year mm -hmm. that basically said, we don't really have data on the benefits of flossing. Everyone says it's a good thing. Right. We talk about the link to heart disease, mm -hmm. but if you actually go and look at the data, scientific studies, okay. there really aren't any scientific studies to support that. So this is an example of something that has become kind of known in the medical community, in the dental right. community. Right. But if if you if you're like saying I want the 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 evidence, show me right. the evidence. Yeah. You're probably not going to find it. Aha. But you don't need no 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 ha ha. <laughs> Wait a second. Look at that. Because some things are so common sense. Right. Okay. So and yeah. if I take the line from our constitution, self evident, yeah. <laughs> that we don't need. If you get to jump off a bridge, you know it's bad for you. That's really yeah. good. You know. I'm going to use that line. That's real self evident. Self yes, self -evident. it is self evident. Valentine. We hold these truths to be self evident. <laughs> Flossing every day is good for you. <laughs> But you know, I think I think it raises this question as well. Like, how do you how would you do a study like that? Right, you would tell right. a hundred thousand people do not floss. Right, oh, hundred thousand yeah. people to floss. Do right. it for a year. Right, be confident that they actually flossed if they said they were, yep. and yep. then compare them. It's an yeah. impossible study to do. Yeah. And who would fund it? And how would it right. actually? How be many carried relationships out? are broken up due to yeah. the gingivitis and everything else you got going on over there? <laughs> you know, I see you closing your mouth. You're nervous. I've been, I've been flossing You're more. Very nervous. Oh, you have. Yes. We recently had this conversation. Yes. Been flossing more and more. I okay, gotcha. My final question: Would you ever run for president? Uh, wow. Um, no. No? No. Okay. I'm flattered you asked. You remind me a little bit, the way you speak, of a former ex-president of ours. Is that right? I don't know if you've heard that, that or not before. Jimmy Carter? Was it? No, was it? President <laughs> Barack Obama. Oh, I was like, a little bit the way you him? speak. Yeah. I don't know. It just popped in my head. I, I, you know, I worked at the White House for a while. I believe in public service. I think it's amazing. I, right. I just think, you know, electoral politics, I feel like, has, has become really challenging. Politics you know? is tough. And I think, you know, why, why are you running... What, what do you hope to accomplish? Mm -hmm. I mean, I think I think there's things you can accomplish as an elected official, but it's, it's would tough. you sign up to be Surgeon General um, if offered? I, you know, I I was offered that job. You were once. offered yeah. Surgeon General. Yep. Back, by who? Uh, by by President Obama. Oh, yeah. Holy moly! And I thought about it, and you saw what it paid. Nope, nope. Actually, <laughs> that that that. 
I, you know, here was something really interesting I didn't know is yeah. that you I, you can't practice surgery if you're the Surgeon General, oh. which I found quite ironic, right? Sure. Given given you're the, the title, General, right. right? But I think it's because they they want you. You can see patients a half a day sure. a week. But, so I was 39 years old at the time, and yeah. I would have had to give up my surgical career. And I love right. being a doctor. And you know, if I do the job for eight years, I probably would have had to retrain. So yeah. He was totally cool about it. Would you be okay in the future? Maybe, yeah, I think so. I, you know, I think that um, in some ways I look at what I do as, yeah. as, a, as sort of that, 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 that type of job. I mean, educating right. people about things. I mean, I think doing it the way that we do it, telling stories and, and engaging people in a different way as opposed to being didactic, saying you must do this, right. you must floss twice a day, whatever it might be. Yeah. Um, I, I like telling the stories more. I think they stick better. I think they leave an impression. People like to share them, so yeah. you have more more of an amplified message. Oh, I'd like yeah. to see that. That's awesome. I want you to be Surgeon General now. <laughs> Get to wear the uniform. And yeah, the uniform's cool, right? isn't it? Though, yeah, people think, I think that's no why uniform. people There's do the uniform. job. Yeah, yeah. I think and then the you're bigger. in charge of all surgeons. Everybody yeah. has to drop down and give you twenty. I think that that's not true. <laughs> okay, <laughs> probably miss touching brains though. I will. <laughs> Dr. Sanjay Gupta, thank you very much. Thank you, guys. <laughs>